Good morning. This is the message for Remembrance Sunday 2020. Every year I read a poem by one of the great war poets. This year I have chosen Rain by Edward Thomas. He was killed on the Western Front near Arras on the 9th of April 1917. I chose it because we have had so much rain recently. On the Western Front, rain turned the earth of northern France into mud and the shell holes into lakes. In this poem, the poet faces his own mortality and prays for the people he loves. Rain. Rain, midnight rain, nothing but the wild rain on this bleak hut and solitude and me. Remembering again that I shall die and neither hear the rain nor give it thanks for washing me cleaner than I have been since I was born into this solitude. Blessed are the dead that the rain rains upon. But here I pray that none whom I once loved is dying tonight or lying still awake solitary, listening to the rain, either in pain or thus in sympathy, helpless among the living and the dead, like cold water among broken reeds, myriads of broken reeds all still and stiff, like me, who have no love, which this wild rain has not dissolved except the love of death, if love it can be towards what is perfect and cannot, the tempest tells me, disappoint. Pausing for reflection on Remembrance Sunday, knowing, be it recently or in the history of our family, how war has caused us loss about the people who have gone before and given their own lives is critical to knowing who we are. When I want to pause for reflection in this way, I go to a small village called Coolidge in Suffolk, where the names of four of my great uncles who died in that war that was called the Great War, who died in that war, are remembered. And as I go, I listen to the music of George Butterworth, who died at the Battle of the Somme on the 5th of August 1916, and especially to the banks of Green Willow. You might want to listen to that music, you can easily access it on YouTube. And he, like my great uncle Daniel, is remembered on the great memorial at Tietval in northern France. The words of Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the earth and the world were formed, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. I misplaced the rest of the words. Here we are. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, O children of the earth. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, which passes like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. 
they fade away suddenly like grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes, in the evening it is dried up and withered. For we are consumed by your displeasure, we are afraid at your wrathful indignation. You have set our misdeeds before you, and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone, our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are threescore years and ten, or if our strength endures even fourscore, yet the sum of them is but labour and sorrow, for they soon pass away, and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath and your indignation like those who fear you? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Turn again, O Lord, how long will you delay? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us with your loving kindness in the morning, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Give us gladness for the days you have afflicted us and for the years in which we have seen adversity. Show your servants your works and let your glory be over their children. May the gracious favour of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper our handiwork and prosper the work of our hands. And so the reflection for this Sunday. You may want to read Colossians 1 verse 24 to chapter 2 verse 7. That's Colossians 1 24 to chapter 2 verse 7. In the reading from Colossians, Paul describes the sacrificial love that he has for his brothers and sisters in Colossae and his willingness to suffer for them. At the time he was writing, Paul was in jail and he could have sulked and blamed his situation on other people, but he was still active and the letter he writes to these people whom he had never met is testimony to his concern for them. Paul chooses, instead of sulking and stropping, to make his life an act of joyful thanksgiving to Christ. He could have opted for a quiet life and avoided the traumas and troubles of being an evangelist, but he chooses instead to follow the path of love, to walk the road with Christ and be vulnerable. And he does this voluntarily. All of us are here because other people chose to make sacrifices for us. Someone gave birth to us. And if there was love, then our mothers chose to take the risks of childbirth and pregnancy so that we would live. We are all some mother's son or daughter. So many people made sacrifices that we might live and lead great lives. In our service of remembrance, we remember men and women who have chosen to take the risk of defending our nation in times of danger and who have served a cause they believed in. We also remember wars that are dangerous and lead people into acts of violence they would recoil from in peace. Wars are costly in so many ways. If you were to visit the lovely German city of Dresden, you can see there an amazing domed church called the Frauenkirche. It was rebuilt after it was destroyed like much of that city in the firestorm caused by Allied bombing on the 14th of February 1945, in which tens of thousands of people died. Crowning the church is a silver cross which was a gift from this nation to the people of Dresden. And it's beautiful. The firm that made this Auburn cross 
employs a silversmith called Alan Smith. His father was one of the bomber pilots who dropped bombs on Dresden. It is a symbol of hope and reconciliation, a sign that enemies can become friends. We worship a God who, as the psalmist tells us in Psalm 46, makes wars to cease to the ends of the earth. He shatters the spear and breaks the bow and says, be still and know that I am God. So in our remembering, let us seek to be still and know that whatever happens, our God is still God. In Psalm 90, the psalmist celebrates his confidence that God is still God. Lord, you have been our refuge in all generations. The psalmist also recognises how fragile human beings like you and me are, like the fading grass. I think this is a great psalm for our times. Many people, especially in the NHS, are choosing to live sacrificially, putting their own lives at risk that others may live. The virus has reminded us all how fragile we are. And in moments like these, we can feel uncertain, vulnerable, troubled by anxiety and fear. I confess I have felt all these things. And in moments like these, I am glad of the psalm and the confidence that God is still God, our refuge and strength, our dwelling place whatever happens. Our God is the God of Jesus Christ, the God of death and resurrection, the God of hope who overcomes by shouldering a cross, sharing our sorrow and tears, refusing to return evil for evil and embracing death with words of forgiveness on his lips. It was this hope that Paul is talking about in Colossians when he describes the mystery of our salvation which God shares with us through Christ as Christ in you the hope of glory. Last Sunday we shared the actions to that great song My Lighthouse. Lighthouses are built on a rock and Jesus calls us to build on the rock by putting his words into practice, and he calls us to shine, for we are lights to the world. St Paul says a similar thing at the beginning of next week's reading from Colossians, but we have closed this week's reading with the same. As you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, go on to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, as you are strengthened and confirmed in faith, just as you were taught, that you may be full of thanksgiving. I can't improve on that. On this Remembrance Sunday, as we remember, may we build on the rock, confessing we are fragile and finding our security in God, who holds us in his love every day. For our God is still God, whatever happens. Amen.